everyone, welcome. This is the 250th episode review for What's in the Deal. Here we are live at the Doom Patrol Carnival. Literally, I didn't plan this out. I legit did not plan this out to be. Review 250. And how to be here before tonight's episode on Doom Patrol. So, thank you so much for supporting and please enjoy the review. Thanks, Pastor Joe. Back to me. All right, so here we go. Um, it's still the same day. It's been a long day for me. I'm recording this at 11 at night. I came out actually home a little bit earlier than expected, just like unwrapping everything I got from Comic Con. It, it was it was a blast. Comic Con was a blast. Also, the Doom Patrol Carnival, amazing. If you're in the New York area in the next three days, well, yeah, next two and a half days, um, check out the carnival. It's great. It's 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 a freaking fun fun ass time. Um, also, getting to meet Danny was just so cool. Well, I say that figuratively because you know what I mean. Anyway, with this week of Doom Patrol. Um, so my plan was I was actually originally when I was filming that I was actually considering like, do I just see the episode first thing in the morning and make the entire review at New York Comic Con? That was initially my plan, but then the audio would have been a very much of a problem. So I said, screw it. Now I'm going to watch it live at night and get my thoughts here. So. This week, we um, are dealing with supposedly our new big bads of the season. Um, honestly, it's very different. And I think we got a good amount of teases of just, like, dealing with, like... Because we've, we, we've handled, at this point, like, a singular villain that's tied into one direct person. And just how the Doom Patrol fits into this. The way they're setting up this um, villain, well, this group of villains, is that each one of them has some sort of connection to one of the main members of the Doom Patrol, and it's actually very, it's, it's interesting, it's an interesting approach, I can, um, again, this was just a tease of what's to come, hopefully we'll get more of this as we uh, progress now through the second half of the season, now that we got some sure footing, and like we're, we're, we got a direction we're heading, um, but overall, I, I, so I, I think this was, it was a really enjoyable episode, more hijinks with our, with, with our, with our cast, we're progressing the characters uh, a little bit more for, uh, for their psyche, giving new questions um, by every turn. And just overall, we're, we're moving through the season finally now at a very consistent pace, so I'm happy with that. So let's go through the Butcher Recap and talk about this week's episode of Doom Patrol. We begin in... Where do we begin specifically? Um, oof. I want to say we begin with... Uh, our old favorite, Mr. Cliff. He's on the computer again. Uh, he got his pills in. This freaking, these free, this, these pills that apparently within two months, you're supposed to feel better. Supposedly. Whether or not these pills will actually work or not, we will never know. Because um, he's a little bit too over to kind of get started on, on his new life. To get more, his head more thinking straight. So um, he decides to take... 50 pills, and the only way he can consume them, since, again, he's a he's a, a, a human brain in a robot body, the only way he can consume it is to attach an IV line with a blood source that goes into his head, which is the only way the, the drugs are going to be able to go to his head. So we're like, oh boy, we're going to get a very drugged up cliff. I'm going to be very curious to see how that's going to turn out. Um, Cliff, uh, meanwhile, for everyone else, Cyborg's still dealing with, uh, with his dad and just them trying to figure out where things go from here between them. That's really most we get. Jane is experiencing, uh, I think a new person, well, new persona to us, um, different, uh, probably old for them established in their, in their head, um, that Jane and the, um, the little girl, they're kind of going through some growing pains. You know, we, we kind of got a hint of that before the, she, apparently the girls <coughs> finally <coughs> going through the next stage of her life. I really don't know how the, how the, the, this, like, they never explain much of Crazy Jane. Like, how did they... Like, if the main girl was, like, the, the little girl was the main host, how does she still... S There's a lot of questions, and I really hope that... Uh, either maybe I missed something or I gotta rewatch the show. I don't know. Um, I'm just always curious about that. The whole psychological nature of the beast. Uh, but there's a, there's kind of, like, a psychiatrist, a, a shrink on deck in Persona uh, inside the head. And she's giving the best advice she can, can to both of them that they have to... I, I really don't know what the advice specific was, but, you know, she's gonna... Also, she doesn't look like someone that I would immediately trust. No offense. She does not look like that type of person. Not gonna lie. 
Um, Larry's still dealing with the bump on his head, and and Rita is currently dealing with um. What what was it? Um, I th- what was damn last week felt like so long ago. It just sad that we've been doing so many reviews that like last week felt like a freaking month ago. So I apologize. I'm a little bit brain dead here. Also, again, I just came home from like a freaking big con, so I'm like I, I I'm already um reducing my cylinders here. Um, but the next thing I remember, we head into the um to one of the to the main um living room, the main c- c- colliding area where. This um, individual, the mysterious time traveler, has a name, Clara de Mills. I think I pronounced that right. I'm going to just call it Clara. But I'm going to say it like that. Clara. Clara. There you go. Okay. So she, she she assembles the Doom Patrol into, into the main living room to tell them that, um, yeah, so I figured out more about my past. There's an evil organization that I'm tied into. That I need you all to take down. The sister of Dada. Dada. Dada? Dada. Yes. Um, there's apparently a, another meaning for it. But I'm completely blanking on it. Um, so they're tied into it. Um, they also have they have some connections with the Ant Farm. Most of them are. I think most or all of them are like. Escape inmate the Doom Patrol inadvertently released back in season one. So it's nice that they're making a callback to like. Yeah the actions of these teams is like now screwing them over in the ass later on. Um, but we don't know much about their motivation, what the, the end goal is, but we know they're bad. They have to be stopped. So Claude's like, you go take care of them. Finish them off for me. I'm going to stay back here and work on the time machine. I don't know why I'm staying that accent. I really don't know. I like saying that accent. I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm do that accent. Um, so Cliff, Larry, Cyborg, and Jane are initially not down for it because like the way Clara says, like, you need to kill them. I want you. To, I wanted them to die. There. And they're like, okay, what else is that extreme? We're fucked up heroes, but we're not... We're not killers. But eventually they get convinced to go. Rita stays behind so she can help her out with the uh, with the time machine. And also because the fact that um, later on afterwards, she um, Clara shows Rita the um, the footage she found that has Rita clearly in it. So Rita starts assimilating. They're like, oh, I'm a time traveler. So that means I... I, I, I'm what I, I I have a future like I'm not just gonna be staying around to this manner and just being the new the new chief I'm actually gonna be able to do something very excited with my life and she gets starts getting super excited and she really wants to stay behind and get this get this time machine back up to work even though she's the one who clearly damaged it last time so like yeah that 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 makes perfect sense that 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 works out well I guess Sort of. I, I, I don't know if that, that's fair or not. Um, so th- they stay behind. So the others head back up. And the old Doom Patrol bus, which I know we've seen it a couple weeks ago on the vacation trip, but we actually get to see them in the bus actually heading to the destination, which is to find the dot dot and take them down. Uh, but we're going to go for Rita stuff first because that seems to be the more... It's a bonding experience between them because um, they're kind of similar. I have a theory that maybe they are related or maybe they are the same person. It's just they don't remember it. They kind of like... I would believe Rita would transform into her or something like that. It could be it. I really don't know. It just seems like it. Uh, but um, they get a little, they get through some bonding moments. So, you know, getting to know each other a tad bit. They have a brief musical montage. Well, not really a montage. More like them dancing and then they actually fixing the problem. And like, you know, Rita's just like, my, my, my thing is that with Rita is that she's way too over eager. Like way too over eager. I'm not going to lie to you. Immediately as soon as the time machine is fixed, she's immediately like, I want to go off on an adventure. I want to do this. I want to like, you know, let's, let's do this. Like we like, okay. Yeah. You need to go meet, meet the chief, but we got time on our side. We can go anywhere. We could do this. And also just realistically just start her career as being this time travel hero or something like that. We don't know what, what it is, but they get it up back up to get it back up working. So now they're just going to wait on the, the other guys to finish the sisterhood. Um, but they're in roots and oh my God, Cliff is, already tripping balls like he's just he's just out of it i I love it i i really love it i love this moment where like he's just beginning to hallucinate and they call they don't they get into a crash not like a bad crap but like the the car the bus has got a commission so they have to go fix it up but cliff does not stay but he just starts wandering into the forest and instead of immediately going after him they decide to let him go okay bye have fun for like half a second then they realize yeah, we should we should probably go back and get him. We should probably do that. So they they head off to go get him. 
Um, Larry's the only one st- st- standing behind since he kind of knows how to get this bus back to work. And so he's staying behind to kind of watch the ship and get it back up to normal. So, so Victor and Jane head off into this very fogged up forest to go find Cliff. And they all have their own adventures. All of them have their own adventures. Cliff is, first of all, just... It's like he's on acid. Like, I know this is not entirely acid, but basically he's, he's on acid. He's just seeing imaginary things all over the place. He finds a portal to another realm, and he goes into this realm. It's like a very darkened room. He he sees a Japanese woman in the middle who's, like, somehow letting Cliff speak in Japanese. And I'm just... Like, I never thought I would see the day where I'm seeing Brendan Fraser's, Fraser sing stuff in Japanese coming out of a robot's body. That's, like, pure dubbing, if anything... And I loved it. And just like, even he still studies iconic catcher. Like, Holy shit. Watch in, while I'm speaking Japanese. Oh my God. I loved it. I love this woman so much. Even like, I'm looking at like, what is this like a real legit thing? Like part of the sisterhood? Or is this more along the lines of just, um, Dada doing something? Like, I really don't know. I couldn't tell by the end of the, at the end of the episode, but like, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with both. Cause man, Cliff was tripping balls. Then uh, even to the point where like he assimilates the woman is like wanting to give him a hug and he decides to hug the and also this woman's in like in like a, a mirror cage so um he's like hugging the cage and it's starting to crack. Um, Jane is wandering and then meets, finally the, a bridge area just becomes like a, a candy shop. She finds this like a, a mysterious woman inside like well I thought that was the therapist from earlier but then like no this is not the therapist it's someone else, uh, which is a very very nice solid ha- head of hair that's all painted white. Um, also, not just Jane is there. Um, apparently, this po- the power of this individual. Don't know the name. Maybe I don't remember the name. Who knows? Uh, I can't tell you what entirely for. But the thing to note is that she has the power to actually go into Jane's conscience or just go into the main conscience because she's able to get the little girl out, which is kind of like the main host. I really don't know what her power base is 100%, but it was... It was really fun. It, it, it was very interesting to see the, the like the how does it the the the, the, sca- the the questioning and the scariness of this scene because, um she this this woman is trying to convince Jane like you know maybe what you guys are doing not the right thing for her, maybe it's time for you to like figure out the way to separate and kind of do your own thing, because you're kind of letting these personas kind of like really boss you around way too much. And the little girl seems to be happy getting what she wants because it seems like lately she's just not be getting what she wants. Even though she is like kind of like the main being of the body, she's not really getting what she wants. And this woman is giving her everything she wants. Um, so it could be an indication of bribery or she's just like, yeah, this is what she wants to be better. But um, honestly, it doesn't really it doesn't really 100 percent paint the picture 100 percent. I We don't know what the plan is, really. Because eventually the other personas start popping in and start like trying to like get in the candy shop to get Jane and the little girl out. But the woman's like, no, this is not what she wants. You can clearly see in her face. She wants to be here. You know, so you should consider starting to like figuring out a way to like get your independence so you can start like really getting things done. Uh, but we, we, we don't 100% know the powers. Uh, even though, even for cyborgs, um issue when he deals with this um this sculptor with a freaking bicycle in the back of his a uh, back of his um body and his body is completely like solid so well not like non close so it's like he's just holding the bicycle so i'm like damn he's gonna have some mad shoulder strength for that i'm being honest there um so i think where do we go from next here i want to say we head into yeah so next is larry and Larry is um, working on the uh, on the bus. He's also commenting that like he hopes to God the bump is like not going to be problematic in the future. Um, but then um, suddenly it starts glowing for a little second. Then you see like someone walk behind, walk past him, and eventually after a while it turns out to be his son. Which honestly I forgot about his son for like a good moment because we haven't seen him in like a long while. Again, it could just because Doom Patrol's been off the air for two for a year, so my. I just forgot that, oh yeah, Larry still has technically a living son. He's anciently old, but like, you know, he's still around kicking. Uh, and he immediately tries to shoot shoot Larry, which I'm, I'm thinking like, is this just residue from like last season's like issues or stuff like that? But no, it turns out he was being controlled by something else. I think he's part of the Dada or we think he's part of the Dada, but then he, it doesn't really matter because he collapses um, right there and there. Around the same time, everyone else starts breaking out of their trance. Uh, mostly when um, 
just a cinematic there's a, a camera peril when the one of the personas breaks through to the camera to the to the candy shop some other mysterious woman shows up and clips darkling room and like literally punches him through the the glass case releasing the woman and oh yeah i forgot like in the context of cyborg and the bicycle person like cyborg's trying to get questions out of him and like are you with dada what's your plan and all the guys just asking like, why are you cyborg Oh, like, why are you? And I'm just thinking to myself, is this like fucking Drax and Destroyer shit where it's like, who's Gamora? And then it's like, where's Gamora? Who's Gamora? And Drax is just like, why is Gamora? And it's like, it's kind of like giving my, me some echoes like that. Like, why is, why are you cyborg? Or like, why are you? It's like, just funny. And it also just paints in the in the parallel what's going on in, um, in Victor's mind right now with like, his internal conflict of like being cyborg and such like that. Uh, eventually, the 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 main person that causes the fog, which was Jane's kind of um, adversary, lifts the whole fog up, revealing that none of them even left the bus. They were just tripping out of their minds, and just they were they never even went anywhere. And they look in the back of the box bo- bus. It turns out the only thing that was real was Larry dealing with his son as his son is passed out um, on his on his knees. So that was that was the only real part. So um, that's kind of a little bit scary over there. Uh, they drive back to the manor. Um, they let Rita know, yeah, yeah, we have a son now, but we didn't beat the data. But we basically are not. We're not doing. This, we're not doing this anymore. This is not something that we have an issue with. That we have a stake in. All we did was just got mind fucked. So we're basically taking a backseat on this from now on. Um, especially Cyborg, who gets really pissed off that he also has a memento from a little souvenir from the from the sculptor dude. He gets a little souvenir from him, and he just gets so pissed off and ir- irritated the fact that. Um, <laughs> in a way he kind of knows he's right the sculptor what he was saying before but he doesn't want to admit it considering the fact that this guy's kind of shady uh, and also that the fact that he might be right um, Larry is taking care of his son and promises to take care of him and he said he won't let anyone stand in his way and his bump starts going um, Jane is starting to feel more pushback from the personas as they finally um, got the girl under control but they lock her in her room and they start blocking off Jane from, from her so it's beginning to be clear that they're trying to separate them again. So that's really not, that's not going to end well. That, that really isn't. Um, Cliff decides to kind of like fall back into like more pill taking, which I'm like, he just started his pill addiction and he's already doing more pills. Oh God. Uh, but uh, he's, he, he, he's starting to, he, he's starting to become a problem. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a little already getting scared from him. I, I really don't know what's going to end up with him um, next week or just in general. Um, and just ending up reading this tell uh, Clara, Clara the news that like yeah they didn't beat the Dada, and she, they're both kind of drunk so they're both like you know what Rita, Rita becomes like I will take care of it. I'll be the sisterhood for you because I'm gonna be the time travel hero that everyone's gonna know about and Clara just starts laughing and just say look I've only known you for like two days really and even I know you're full of shit. That's entirely not your character. You are not going to be good. I can explain what happened in the video and the photo, but I can tell you're not that. You are definitely not that. So uh, whatever whatever you're saying is not true, which really insults Rita and kind of like, re- like again, you don't want to make a piss, uh, a drunk woman p- pissed off. You really don't want to do that. So in retaliation, she drinks, she downs another margarita. She heads downstairs and she said, you know what? I'm going to take a ride on, on the time trial machine. I'm going to do this. And she just goes into the time tr- tr- time machine, starts inserts a date, and then just um, heads off, re- not even caring about the the consequences of her actions. And that's where we end this week's episode of Doom Patrol. So again, I'm very curious on the, on the sisterhood. I want to know more about them. Um, it seems like like they they know of the Doom Patrol. They're like they were rarely really prepared for for them. So I want to see more of them. Hopefully, we'll get some good development out of them in the next few weeks. Um, again, everyone's sending a very interesting cyborg. What is that? What is, um, identity crisis, Rita with her identity crisis, Jane dealing with her identities, kind of like pushing her out of things. Cliff being drugged up, which is, I'm not surprised over. I'm actually, I'm actually pleased. I'm, I'm really, I really cannot wait to see where these are, these all go next. Um, uh, also I'm just wondering, Phil Morris is, he's, um, cyborg's dad. Uh, he's like, he's only just like a, a, a recurring He's only get no. He's he's a guest star throughout the season, but he's been like in almost every episode so far. So I'm like, damn, 
You might as well just promote him in a series where you're like, we're just basically trying to fit in Cyborg's dad in every episode. So I'm like, just promote him already. He he, he earned it. He, he deserved it. Uh, will it actually happen? Uh, who, who, who the hell knows? Um, also, I've been looking online yet. Yeah, so, so Clara's real official DC name is called Madame Rogue. When will we get the shoe drop on that? Or if that's just going to be like, this is their take on it. I don't know. But it, it would be a pretty cool name to have if we eventually do give it to her. So uh, we'll be seeing that fairly soon. Um, and then, yeah, mostly, again, I, I think this episode was just another enjoyable one. Highlight of the week, just seeing Cliff get drugged up and just like him doing his own thing was just hilarious. I I, I wouldn't do a drugs with Cliff, but I would just love watch being with Cliff while he's doing that. So, um, yeah. Um, so for me, I'm gonna give this episode two thumbs up. I really enjoyed it at the end. Um, let me know in the comments below what did you think of this week's episode of Doom Patrol. Uh, let me know. Also, again, thank you so much for helping us get to 250 episodes of the show. This wasn't a special like big thing like we did with 200. What we're gonna do for 300, but it, it still counts. 250. It's a quarter of a thousand. Uh, makes me think that like two years in, and we're still doing this. I'm happy. I'm real. I'm really, really, really happy. I can't wait to keep. Hopefully doing another 250 more and we'll, we'll we'll be there at 500, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But again, if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two from Action Rings, reviewing every episode of the third season of Doom Patrol. If you want to know what we're normally doing on What's the Two besides our Doom Patrol reviews, tomorrow morning we're about to start up our Nancy Drew season three episode reviews that will be coming out every Friday nights on the CW or for the next day on the CW app. Stay tuned for that. Uh, we're, also be, we're also doing Heels episode reviews each and every um well the finale is going to post monday morning but we'll be back on tuesday mornings the week after that with some hopefully some cool things I, i've been working on some cool things um well a cool i, I don't know why i say cool thing cool thing what could, it could be good cool thing I, I, I lost my train of thought i really did uh but i can't wait um that's gonna be a fun one i, I can't speak much of it because it's not 100 percent iron fly but um heels is wrapping up so we got the season finale uh co review coming out on monday and then we have a season one review wink wink um, the week after that, and then we have the season two prediction, hopefully speaking, um, the week after that. So we'll see how that all goes. Um, then we also have the rookie season four episode reviews each and every, um, Monday mornings normally next week's going to be Tuesday mornings, um, after brand new episode on Sunday nights on ABC or on Hulu the next day. Uh, we're also doing DC star girl season two episode reviews each and every Wednesday mornings after a brand new episode on Tuesday nights on the CW or for the next day on the CW. Uh, however, next week it's going to be get pumped over to Thursday morning as next week we are doing a special Chucky first impressions um, for the, the Wednesday time slot uh, because the new Chucky show comes out on Sci-Fi next week and I'm very eager to talk about it. Hopefully we get to do that every week, but it's, it's uh, like always with first impressions. Those are pilot runs, so like if the pilot does our pilot does extremely well or we just see enough attention we will do a full series review similar to what else we've been doing it will be freaking complicated since like we're already doing five shows a week but now why not do six we'll see how it goes we'll see it, it, it's intermovable we'll see uh but that will be excited but so check that out next week i also got to see the chucky truck um this today at the new york comic con so i got a couple stories on that that will well, i'll be sending that over for the first impressions next week uh even some cool stuff so stay tuned on that. But again, if you're unaware, this has been What's in the Two from Action X. Please subscribe to us on YouTube.com slash Action X videos. Like, favor, share this review if you want to. But it helps us get it out there to other members of the Fan Patrol who has yet to discover us. Helps us beat up that YouTube algorithm that hates me ever so much in life. And as well as sharing us for free here on the interwebs. Please also uh, follow us on social media, including our Twitter and Instagram feeds. And ring that bell for notification when our next Doom Patrol review is live, which is normally each and every Friday mornings. And for all you members of the Fan Patrol out there, I'll see you all next week for the next episode review. I'm trying to think if there's anything going on next week uh, that will prohibit it. I do not believe so. Uh, yeah, I think we, we should be good. But again, until, th until then, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. Again, thank you so much for 250 uh, episodes. Also remember, if you're in New York, and you have access to New York Comic Con somehow, please check out the Doom Patrol um, Carnival Patrol um, attraction there. It was a lot of fun for me. Uh, you'll have a lot of fun. You have the next two days. If you can go today, you got two more days. So go check that out. So please, I would really highly recommend it for you. Uh, but until then, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. And as always, peace out.